school had loads of shortages, but one thing we weren't short of was bullies. First, there was the official school bully, Kevin Watson. Oh, to give me detention because of you. I'm gonna have you, Grimley. And this is just the start of it. And then there was the unofficial school bully, our PE teacher, Mr. Digby. You are Doug Dynamo Digby. You are a killing machine. You could have James Bond, Joe Bookner, and the whole Vietnamese army put together. <laughs> Dear Angela, I'm coming back. See you soon, Dad. What are you doing, Grimmy? Who's Mr. A. Digby, sir? Extra special punishment lesson. Get changed now. <laughs> Clipping ears, tweaking nipples, it's all part of school life. If it worries you that much, put them on the school caning list. In my day, we used to cane their eyes. No, Doug. The answer is to dismantle the culture that allows bullying to flourish. It's like you've never heard of empathy. The school should start a strict anti-bullying campaign, and you'd be the perfect person to carry the message through to the kids. For some reason, the bullies are the ones you have the best rapport with. Not now, love. I'm working. Oh, it's like you were never young yourself, the way you treat your pupils. What are you gawping at, Grimly? Full ahead. Ramming speed! Ah! I'm Kung Fu, I am. I can walk the rice paper and leave no trace. Oh, I wish I was Kung Fu. Then I could have Kevin Watson and everyone else in school. Television exponents of the martial arts create the myth that violence can occur without harmful consequences. Do you ever stop to consider, for example, the mayhem that would be caused by a real-life bionic man? Steve Austin's only supposed to have one bionic arm, so when he tries to bust out of handcuffs and that, he just rip his other arm off. My point exactly, Darren. If he got up to his violent antics in real life, Steve Austin would be as much of a menace to himself as to the rest of society. They're all the same. Steve Austin, Steve McGarrett, Steve McQueen. Imagine, though, you and Miss Titley. What do you think it'd be like kissing her? Oh, my heart would skip a beat. It'd be like there was music all around me and coloured lights. But then, one day in the future, when you're married to her, you'll do it, won't you? Hi, Gordon Grimley of Planet Earth do pledge my vow of marriage. It is the pon far, the time of mating. Ah, oh, I was engaged in activity. I'll give you one Earth hour. in the poem, me. Um, I, uh... But thy eternal summer shall not fade, nor lose possession of that fair thou owest, nor shall death brag thou wanderest in his shade, when in eternal lines to time thou growest. So long as men can breathe or eyes can see, so long lives this, and this gives life to thee. Daydreaming? Well, if it's something more interesting than Shakespeare's sonnets, I think we'd all like to know what you were dreaming about. Um, um. Doug, I'm glad I found you. You wouldn't fancy coming round to my place tonight, would you? Yeah, of course, sugar. And we can discuss our anti-bullying campaign. Oh, no, Doug, it won't be all work. 
I think it's time I did a special candlelit dinner. Just the two of us. Sounds good to me, sugar. A romantic night together is just what we need to bring out the softer side. The Doug Digby will stop the bullies and make his girlfriend really fall for him. You can rely on me. <laughs> Don't know what them Yanks was playing at over there. If we'd have been in there, the whole thing had been done and dusted in five minutes. You've missed the old point, Dad. As Marshall McLuhan said, television brought the brutality of the war into the comfort of the living room. Done and dusted in five minutes. It was lost in the living rooms of America, not on the battlefields of Vietnam. Dad. What now? If there was a girl and you really, really liked her, but you weren't sure what to do. Don't tell her to lose weight, no matter how much of a porker it is. Don't get up for the sister, even if it's gagging for it. And never take your shoes off in hot weather. But what if this was a beautiful girl you really cared about? Ah, shut up your noise, I'm watching telly. What was you bearing about? Father son chap. I'm pretty good. Bird trouble. Don't tell her as fat, no matter how much of a porker it is. Don't get off with a sister, no matter how much her's gagging for it. And don't ever go for outside tops and oily hands. Your dinner's getting cold. It's never easy. But we've all been through it. Once you've got to know each other a bit, it's time to make a subtle, respectful advance. An invitation to the pictures. Some flowers. If she's got an interest in Yao too, she'll soon give you a clue. You grimly. Tomorrow, day after, it don't matter. You're dead. Darren? What's going on? Nothing, Mum. What's happened to you? This was the jungles of Borneo. You'd have had your throat cut. What are you doing letting your guard down? What are you doing parading around in your underpants? And what are you doing with Kettle Master tattooed on your arms? You've gone soft! Uh, so sorry, Dad. I, uh, I was thinking of something else. I suppose you want a tie in now, don't you, Angela? Yes, please, Dad. <coughs> What's that? <coughs> so, this is you. A P.E. teacher. I tried for the Army, Dad. Went for the SAS. Pansies. Yeah. Do you have a girlfriend? Yeah. We're kind of uh, coming out of a rough patch at the moment. So lay down the law to her. The only language they understand. Actually, Dad, I was supposed to be seeing her tonight. So what? Your old man's in town. Priorities. Right, son? Right, Dad. some flowers. Would you allow to go to the pictures? Oh, they're lovely. <clears throat> the pictures. Oh. oh. You're expecting Mr. Digby. I'll go. No, don't. Let's have a nice glass of wine, eh? You do like wine, don't you, Gordon? 
I don't know. So now you get to find out. Have a seat. Thanks, miss. Make yourself comfortable. Yes, miss. Gordon, we're out of school. You know you can call me Geraldine. Mm hmm. So, how long's it been then? Ten years? You had to be away a lot, Dad. Eh? Maiming and killing. Do you remember after Suez? When I took you fishing? Yeah. Taught me how to gut a fish with my own teeth. Oh, happy days, eh, son? Happy days, Dad. And when you couldn't get into any of the school sports teams, the soppy orphanage gave you a pet rabbit. Flopsy. I know you didn't like the business with the snares, but, you know, there's nothing I hate more than a softy. Bake a sandwich. Because if you have gone soft, I've arrived in the nick of time. What's wrong, then? I'm dying. No. Got ya! <laughs> <laughs> I've got cancer. Very funny, Dad, eh? You won't catch me out this time. <laughs> no, I'm not joking. I've got cancer. I thought this time I'd give him a real incentive not to be the same old brute. I should have known he'd let me down. Yet again. Gordon, who is there round here who likes the things I like? Who I can talk to? I mean, really talk to? I think I know the answer now. About those lines from Shakespeare. Oh, yeah. I think they mean a person's beauty can outlive their physical life. If you love someone and they love you, then that's bigger than life and death. Sorry, Geraldine. Is that wrong? No, Gordon. That's not wrong. It's not wrong at all. I'm only a few years older than you. Hardly older at all. flying up out of a glass into someone's eye. I don't have wine too often. I suppose it's only to be expected. I'd better get home and rinse it in the bathroom sink. Sorry, miss. Searching but not fine. Kevin Watson's gonna kill me. Other kids would just get the big brothers. You would have to be school spanner, wouldn't you? Oh, what do you care? You've got Miss Titley now. No, I haven't. What? Her lips were a blank page upon which my heart could have written its most passionate message. <sighs> Instead, my pen just leaked everywhere. There's some here think fighting's clever. Some of you who think it's all right to go around boxing one another's ears for no good reason. I've kept you back after school. I've made you listen to double Beethoven. Well, we're going to stamp this out once and for all. A couple of you will be called out after assembly to see Miss Titley and Mr Digby. Sit up, please. Now, Kevin, I want you to listen to how Darren felt when you bullied him. 
Darren? Yes, miss. You felt frightened, didn't you? I suppose. And vulnerable? I suppose. And you wanted it to stop? I suppose. Kevin, if that was the other way round, if someone was bullying you, how would you feel? It was just soft. Everyone has feelings. Look at Mr. Digby. He's somebody you look up to. He has them. He's got a soft side. Isn't that so, Mr. Digby? I'll make a man of you. Take one last breath. Do you hear that, Angela? Do you hear that, Angela? Do you hear that, Angela? Isn't that so, Mr. Digby? Oh, come on, Digby. Let's hear about your feelings. Show me your soft side. You've gone soft. You've gone soft. You've gone soft. I want to see it now. Come on, softy. Show me how you feel. Can't keep Kevin watching back after school forever. I've got to let him hang when he's 15. She's broken up with Digby. He says he's coming round our way tonight. I can't believe it. She's broken up with Digby. Look, Gordon, I know you're school spanner and not into fighting and everything, but if you were there with me, there'd be two of us and it might put him off. You'll sleep by me, won't you, Gordon? Oh, I never thought you'd see since. This is my chance. I shall have messed it up this time. This is my chance. On your feet, when you look at me when you talk. Not unless you call me duck. Doug. Doug. I've just messed up everything. I was patching up things with Geraldine in here. Have to start with you. Don't be soft routine. Yeah, well, looks like I was right. You are soft. You at least I don't have cancer. <laughs> well, I won't have for much longer. Well, you can have treatment. Yeah. But the old man's got a bit boiled. Me and the lads are off to sort it out. You're scared. You've never been scared in your whole life, and now these things come along and. You can't shoot at it, you can't lay a stick of dynamite under it, you can't even shout stupid things to it on the parade ground. You're not soft and you don't have to bully me to prove it. It's okay to be scared of dying, Dad. It's okay. Yeah, well, I would, you know, what with being the cock of the estate. But I'm having loads of beer and fags tonight. And sex. Oh, Mr. Titney, um, there's this kid in school says he's going to kill me. And I was just Mr. wondering... Mr. Titney, I need to talk to you right away. Whatever's the matter, Gordon? Well, you know that girl I asked you about? Well, I did what you said, and it worked, sort of. But anyway, I've got another chance, and I have to do something really special. Really special? Well, there's nothing more special than a poem. The pen is mightier than the sword, Gordon. Never more so than in matters of the heart. Once there was a girl. She was my one true love. I wrote her a poem. Oh, you don't need to wear perfume, Gordon. That new ointment's supposed to be odourless. You ain't going out, am you? I've done crinkly chips for tea. I am going out, Mum. And I shall return victorious. It's time for Gordon Grimley's broadside of romance. It's a special poem. Well, not mine exactly. Mr. Titley wrote it for someone years back. Bye, Mum. Duck Digby, you've got a nerve. Hello, Geraldine. I'm Doug's father. I just wanted to tell you that it's my fault that he couldn't see you last night. We had a lot of catching up to do and some differences to sort out. Well, I best leave you. Nice to meet you, Geraldine. Ah, get off! Get off! Hello, Grimley. Good. Go 
on you. Get off home before I take me rolling pin to you! Well, I don't know what you're looking so shocked about, Darren Grimley. What's the mother's for, eh? Now, come on. I've made up some butterscotch angel delight for tea, and it's your turn to lick the spoon. Come back later. No, that wouldn't be a good idea right now. Oh, I was going to show you a poem. It's for you. I feel awful. Gordon, what happened between us last night? Not that anything happened. Can you forget it ever happened? Forget? I, I can't. I... Grimley, what are you doing here? Nothing, sir. I was stuck on my homework. Anything else? No, sir. Sorry, sir. Bye, miss. Bye, Gordon. Get some treatment. The doctors say my chances are good. I'll see you soon. Beryl Digby, Sergeant Major, Special Incursion Company, Dad. P.S. I've left you a little something. I hope you like it. <coughs> <coughs> That's the cutest piggy in the whole wide world. You are. You are. Yes, you are. So, Digby had feelings and sensitivity, and Miss Titley had fallen for it. But Gordon knew it wouldn't last, and when the mask fell from Digby's face, he, Gordon, would be waiting. Well, has Digby learned his lesson? Find out next with another episode coming right up. Money, money.